Throughout this video, you might notice a strand of dog hair hanging from my cheek. You can blame this creature right here. Every now and then on this channel, we have the opportunity to review a smartphone. This is about the fourth or fifth review on this channel, but this isn't typically where you go to find your typical smartphone review. Speaking of which, we're going to talk about its quirks, its weird features, and then we're going to take it on the road and see how it... Wait, is that the wrong channel? Okay, we might still talk about its quirks. It does have a few of those, and it also looks familiar. Looks very familiar. Looks kind of like an iPhone 7 Plus. I'd like you to meet the Xiaomi Mi 6, a beautiful flagship from China. Sorry, uh, this phone gets extremely dirty. Fingerprints, dust, all that just sticks to this thing like a magnet. It reminds me in a way of the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus Jet Black series phones. They're just, they're just fingerprint magnets and dust seems to find its way all over this device. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with this brand of this phone in particular, Xiaomi is a very popular smartphone brand in China. It's actually one of the largest manufacturers of smartphones in the world, but we don't hear about it here in the States because pretty much all of it takes place in China. And the Mi 6 is their latest attempt at a smartphone flagship. I've got to say, pulling it out of the box, using it for a few days, my impressions, this is an awesome phone, especially for the price. I would have chosen this over my daily driver, the Samsung Galaxy S7, any day of the week. It's sporting a Snapdragon 835 octa-core processor, pretty much top of the line by this point in 2017. See the comparison here between this and the S7, and 6 gigabytes of RAM, which is phenomenally large for a phone of this caliber. 5.15 inch display it's only 1080p and IPS, but I would say that 1080p in this ratio and this uh, screen size is actually sufficient. You don't see any pixels anyway. You really can't see the difference between that and a 1440p display unless you get super, super close. And the fact that it's a lower resolution means that its battery life will last considerably longer than the S7 counterpart. Build quality is immaculate. This is something that uh, I'm always concerned about with Chinese knockoffs, if you will, but this really doesn't give you that impression at all. This is a phone that feels like it belongs in the top tier. I'm talking along with the OnePlus 5, the Samsung Galaxy S8, the LG G6, and even the iPhone 7 and the upcoming iPhone 8. And with the price of around 400 US dollars, this has to be one of the best feeling smartphones ever that I've ever held. And I've held quite a few smartphones. I used to buy and sell them all the time on Craigslist. This feels better in the hand than the iPhone 7 and better in the hand than the S7. I can say that with confidence. Now let's talk about this screen a bit more. Up to 600 nits of brightness, which is comparable to my MacBook's brightness. That's pretty incredible in itself. And then down to a mere one nit of the ultra night mode display. If you want this thing to get super dark on you, that's not a problem here. It's just be cautious, you're barely going to be able to see anything. It's even got eye care on board to filter out that extra high energy visible blue light. And something else I have to say, the contrast ratio in this IPS display is freaking awesome. I was convinced at one point, I'm not going to lie, that this was a Super AMOLED display. I actually had to double check online to make sure it was IPS. The blacks here look very black, that's really good. I think the contrast ratio is 1350 to 1. That's not infinite, of course, but it looks very convincing. And a screen resolution of 1080p combined with a 3350 milliamp hour battery gives you easily a full day's use. I've actually had this last about twice as long as my S7 to date, and that's because my S7's battery has just been slowly dwindling down to a mere like six hours of daily use. It's pretty bad. And I've only owned this phone for about six months or so. I'm kind of disappointed with how the battery life has degraded so much over time. Uh, if I have this phone in six months, I'll be sure to uh, give you a follow-up on this battery life as well. But for now, this has a bigger battery than the S7, and the screen size is almost identical to the S7. So I expect that this phone uh, will just have a longer battery life in general. They were able to squeeze such a big battery into this small phone as well. I'm actually quite impressed with that. Now, something I want to bring up about water resistance. This is technically only splash resistant. This actually isn't water resistant either. This is just uh, IP68 splash proof. So you could dunk this in a cup of water, you're not supposed to, but it would probably be okay. This phone, on the other hand, is not IP rated. It's just splash proof. So I'm not sure I would feel as comfortable dunking this in a cup of water, although I'm sure it would be okay if you just you know, dunked it in and pulled it back out. There are still connections that are exposed. They are on this phone as well, but I think this would fare just a bit better because it does have that IP rating. Now, I kind of overlooked the graphics performance in this video. I understand that. It's sporting the same Adreno 540 that the Samsung Galaxy S8, 8 Plus, and OnePlus 5 are, the HTC U11 
Every flagship, for the most part, you can think of by this point in 2017 are sporting the Adreno 540. It's a beast of a graphics processor in a mobile phone. It'll run any mobile game you want. I didn't see any hitches at all playing the few games that I played on here. Now let's talk about this dual camera setup back here. For a lot of people, the camera is a make or break. This is one of those things that kind of speaks to the build quality of the phone. If the camera quality is not that great, then the whole phone just feels less impressive. And this was going to be the make or break for me with the Mi 6. I have to say though, I am extremely impressed. So each of these cameras is slightly different. Of course, they're both using 12 megapixel sensors, but one has an extra lens piece. This is the wide angle lens. It also has a shorter focal length and a wider aperture. The second camera, what they're calling the telephoto camera, has twice the focal length of the first camera and has an f2.6 aperture. So it won't do as well in low light situations, but it will give you twice the zoom of the first camera and you don't have to lose any resolution at all. So this has the flair of both the iPhone 7 Plus and the LG G6, which I see nothing wrong with. It's a pretty good combination. The G6 had an ultra wide angle lens and a fairly narrow lens. The iPhone 7 Plus had one camera with a focal length of 28 millimeters, the other with a focal length of 56. That's how you get those cool like double focused shots on the iPhone 7 Plus. Now, while this can't focus on two things at once, which to be frank, isn't that big of a deal. I think very few people are gonna use that feature on the iPhone 7 Plus. This does have the ultra wide angle lens on the first camera so you get quite a lot in your field of view for that first camera and then if you want to zoom in twice as far without losing any resolution you can do that by switching to the second camera as easy as clicking this button right here and you can see that despite having a smaller aperture on the second camera the zoom feature does fairly well outside in daylight brightness and contrast look pretty good especially in auto mode I would say that the inside the bluish tint in these photos is a bit unnerving. I think the white balance could be adjusted a bit more for uh, pictures taken inside. The S7 though, to be frank, has the same issue, although its pictures tend to look a bit more green for some reason. You can only really tell if you compare these side by side, uh, but that's just how these cameras are calibrated. It depends on where they're calibrated and in what lighting situations. A negative feature both the S7 and the Mi 6 Sport though when it comes to color reproduction is oversaturation on their rear cameras. I would say that the S7 it's a bit worse in this regard. Samsung phones have always been this way though. I found that even the S3 and the Galaxy S2 tended to oversaturate colors. Uh, this isn't too big a deal though, and I think that the Super AMOLED screen makes things look a bit worse. Video quality, also pretty consistent on this phone. You're looking at some examples now. This is the side-by-side -side comparison between the Mi 6 and the Galaxy S7, so you get kind of like a, a 4K versus 4K comparison of sorts. I will say though that the Mi 6 is a bit strange in the way that it handles video. I would say that the 4K 30 option is pretty much mandatory at this point, but it does not include a 1080p 60fps option, only 1080p 30. In fact, to get 60fps, you have to go all the way down to 720p. I would much prefer the 1080p 60fps option over the 720p 120fps option, but I mean, that's what they went with. It's really the only choice we have here. The Galaxy S7, by the way, will record in 1080p 60, and it does a fairly good job at it. You know, I gotta be honest here, I did not test the front camera at all. How do I even get there? Oh, here we go. Okay, let's take a shot. Doesn't look too bad. All right. <laughs> Look, it's guessing my age, no way. It says age 23 male. There's no way. Oh, if I squint, it thinks I'm older. I need to do this from now on. I've gotta say, while this isn't the most accurate thing in the world, it's pretty cool that it shows me how old I am. And let's check video quality in the front. Looking pretty good. I have no idea what resolution this is, but uh, I don't know, it looks decent on camera. Hopefully it looks decent on YouTube as well. That front camera, by the way, eight megapixels. I expect that in a flagship, also 1080p recording resolution. Now, another trait of the Mi 6 that will have you second guessing whether or not they completely ripped off the iPhone 7 is the fact that it has two speakers. So it's got a stereo speaker array and it uses the earpiece for the first and the speaker on the bottom, I think it's the bottom right? Bottom right, this one here, as the second speaker. This one is a bit louder, but I will say that the clarity in both is satisfactory. Oh, and something else you may have caught down here, there is no headphone jack. So guess what that means, folks? You gotta use one of these right here. This isn't the lightning to three and a half millimeter headphone jack, but this is the USB-C, which is the charging port on here, USB Type-C to three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Yep, we are back to this. And uh, this right here is just screaming iPhone 7, 7 Plus. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to think about this. I'm gonna keep this in here for the rest of the video, just so that, you know, you know. Other traits the Mi 6 shares with the iPhone 7, the fact that there is no removable battery, but of course you kind of have to expect that. With build quality like this, you sacrifice the removable back panel 
for just a better feel in the hand. This glass here is not going to be coming off easily, and uh, that's something I am willing to accept. I will take the compromise of not removing the battery for the sake of having a phone that looks better all around. The Mi 6 also does not have an SD card slot, instead it has two SIM card slots, which I guess is cool for those who travel a lot, but even my Global S7 only has one SIM card slot, and instead uses the second slot for expandable storage. This phone only has 64 gigs of internal storage, that may be enough for some, it's enough for me, but it might not be enough for you, so having Having that expandable storage taken away is a bit of a downfall here. A few changes from the iPhone 7 though, this is also a deviation from the Samsung Galaxy S7. This phone comes with an IR blaster, so you can still control your TV, assuming you have like a TV that's compatible with universal remotes, you can do that on your phone. This also has a volume rocker instead of dedicated up and down volume buttons. This is a bit old school here, I'm not a huge fan of this, it just feels a bit cheap. I'd rather have dedicated up and down buttons, that's just me personally. I'm used to it by this point, I mean the S7 had them, the iPhone 7, 7 Plus had them, I don't know why this doesn't happen. The last thing worth mentioning about this phone, the home button. It resembles sort of, kind of in a way, the iPhone 7's home button. It also kind of resembles the Samsung Galaxy S7's home button. So this is not a physical button, you can't push it in, so that's kind of like the iPhone 7, so that's not a physical button either. But instead of giving you that fake button click, this one just vibrates. That's, that's all it does. But it's super quick, check this out. Super quick, like it recognizes your thumbprint right away. You don't need to click the home button or anything like that to turn the screen on. All you gotta do is just gently rest your thumb over the home button and the phone will turn on and unlock for you. It's extremely responsive and it's recessed slightly into the phone's body. So you know exactly where you're pressing every single time. So what I would rate this phone on a scale from one to 10, assuming price, pros and cons. This is a solid 8.5 out of 10. And I say that with confidence, I say that actually in a, in a good light. I think that a B average is excellent for a phone that's only about $400. This is probably the most inexpensive flagship you can buy, with the exception of a few competitors that you'll find on Amazon and elsewhere. The Xiaomi Mi 6 is probably the least well-known brand here in the United States. Uh, that makes a really good smartphone. This would be my daily driver if only I could use it with Verizon. Doesn't work with Verizon, I already tried that. As always, you can find the product reviewed in this video. This is a Xiaomi Mi 6, linked in this video's description. Be sure to check it out, let me know what you think. Also, leave a comment regarding, I don't know, maybe a phone matchup. This versus something else that you think is comparable for the price and for the specs. I would like to review other phones on this channel, so maybe this will be a good start for that. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you like this one. Be sure to give it a thumbs down if you feel the complete opposite and click the subscribe button if you haven't already for more content like this. This is Science Studio, thanks for learning with us.